enjoy today's stream. Hello everyone, welcome, welcome. My name is Mac. I am the community manager for Dungeon Alchemist. Uh, welcome one and all to the channel. If you're new here, this is the weekly dam stream. We call it a dam stream because when you save a map in Dungeon Alchemist, it's saved as a .dam file. Kind of, kind of like a JPEG is for an image, you know, it's a .dam file, which stands for Dungeon Alchemist Map. So we lean into that a little bit and joke around with it. We call the stream a damn stream. We do a damn challenge every two weeks. See above, uh, the current damn challenge is Feywild Holiday, as a reminder. That is a map-making challenge where you make a map of any shape or size using <coughs> Feywild Holiday as inspiration. You submit your map to our Discord in the Damn Challenge channel, following the rules pinned at the top of the channel. And uh, if you are picked as the winner, you get a $10 Hero Forge gift card, as well as uh, your map is showcased on our weekly newspaper, and uh, you get bragging rights over the community. Anyway, I uh, sorry for the little uh, intro spiel there. Just wanted to welcome one and all and make sure everyone was on the same page and understood what was going on. Uh, I just want to personally, you know, say hello to a few of you. I've noticed we got a lot of familiar faces here today. Amanda, welcome back. Um, let's see here, really quickly. I've also got some new faces. I think there was a couple first-time chatters here. So we got D&D &D Worldcom, hello, welcome. Uh, Scott World, hello, welcome. Who else do we got that's new? Saw some first time chatters. Texas 512, 5012, Lignox, Maine. Hello, hello. And uh, let's see. Amazing streams. Uh, Joker. Snoo Snoo, my man, how you doing? Swedish Cook, Von Yakos. Shortle, Wolf Gold. Man, we got a good turnout today. Wolfie, Pie Man. Welcome back, everyone. Mondu, how are you? Ginger Lee. Sack, hey, hey, buddy. Uh, random ladybird, hello. We've got a uh, lot of uh, familiar faces here. I'm sorry if I missed anyone there. I was just kind of glancing over the hellos and welcomes and saying hi to everyone I can. You know what? I appreciate you asking, Wolfgold. I am feeling much better. So, I basically took... <clears throat> after I cut the stream short, I took most of the weekend off and just kind of relaxed. And by the, t the end of the weekend, I was feeling much, much better. So... Gotcha. Uh, welcome, one and all. Um, <laughs> how are you all doing? Hey, Hieronimo, I see you. <laughs> so, um, I just kind of had this uh, skeletal planes map opened up for today. Just kind of randomly generated it before we started. Obviously, the point of the damn streams is to showcase amazing community maps which we just typically will hop on Steam Workshop and... Oh my gosh. Okay, nope, you're grounded. <laughs> Let's, uh... <laughs> oh my gosh, Wolf Gold. No more. Okay, let's see here. Let's see here. Um, So I cannot look at the Fae... Wild holiday ones because I don't want to show favoritism leaning into next week. But I I think Soggy Land is safe. Let's take a look at Soggy Land at night. So I put out a challenge to our community on our socials, Facebook, and Reddit, and I said if we hit fifteen hundred followers by the time we go live, I would do a giveaway. And uh, that is not a prank. That was legitimate offer. And unfortunately, though, we did not hit 1,500. We're at 1,495 right now as I speak. Um, on my, my dashboard side, it shows the correct count. On the viewer side, it rounds up. Now, that being said, um, the traditional every 50 viewers will do a giveaway, okay? Okay. Um, I know today is April Fool's, so it's hard to, like, take anything I say at face value. Um, I'm really not one for corporate shenanigans on on April. Um, 
on April Fool's Day. Like, I'm okay with you doing it with your friends and family and stuff, but I feel like, sh sh uh, like corporate shenanigans with it can be very misleading and cause a lot of frustration. Um, so I try not to do it, at least uh, to the point that it's very, like, like a very good troll, you know? So, like, I posted today on our socials, I will not prank our prank our community. I will not prank our community. And then later on, Vim posted that I'm now the chief uh, truffle officer. I guess I'm the CTO of uh, Dungeon Alchemist now. I'm in charge of all things fungal. So I, I demanded to him that immediately we allow all wall mushrooms to scale because they're locked at size and they're tiny. But now that we have the Z axis, I, I want them to scale when the legends are disabled. So that, uh, that was my first uh, decree as the CTO. So hopefully, I'm gonna make changes that are good for this community. If, I have, if I'm in charge of all things fungal related, like, give me more mushroom ideas. Let's let's fill him up. He's gonna regret it. <clears throat> you knew DA was just an April Fools. What are you talking about? So the thing is, is. That 1,500 follower giveaway, I'm still going to honor it because we got pretty dang close. I like to think I am a fun guy, you know, um, as the chief um, ruffle officer or chief fungal officer, CTO, CFO. Um, it's my duty. <clears throat> This is great. I, I need to run around this track. Where does the ride start? That's important. Hmm. Kind of seems like right here where the baby is. Free police sitting. Yep. Must be this tall to ride Peas Mold Express. Um... Zero NGO, we're actually sitting at 1,495 followers. The Twitch viewer side is very misleading. Um, it rounds up. One second. As you can see right here, it says 1,495. We're five away. But I wasn't planning on doing like millionth follower, you get the prize. Fifteen. That's way too manipulative. People can make extra accounts or make sure they're wait until they're 1500 to get the follow and get the giveaway. We're just going to do a drawing with everyone present. And honestly, we're so close. I'm just going to round it up as uh, as chief truffle officer, you know, it, and uh, make sure that we do a giveaway anyway. And then when we hit 50 viewers, cat fur on my face my cat was in here laying on my desk and on my chair and it's everywhere so um when i when we hit 50 viewers expect a giveaway okay so let's start the first one might as well because we're getting we're pretty close to 50. ready spaghetti go honestly though like like i said i'm not about corporate shenanigans on on april fool's day i i i'm more like a guten pronken kind of guy it's like you know i said you get fi at 1500 we get it no we didn't get there you know what darn we didn't get there good tune pronken we do it anyway that's the kind of uh the the uh april fools i like i hope i don't seem like a scrooge But yeah, we are very close. Oh, we just hit 50 viewers, so we'll be doing another giveaway as soon as this one finishes. Yes. Wait a second. I mean, we didn't make it. I'm just being a good sport.
So when this giveaway ends, we'll do another one, okay? And uh, make sure you're following the stream because you must be following to qualify for the giveaway. That's like pretty much the only main thing. You got to be following the stream and then you got to type exclamation giveaway in chat. I'm going to hop in Mini Mac here and we'll take a walk around the park. Oop, get on that bridge, yo. <laughs> this definitely reminds me of Thunder Mountain. Uh, anyone uh, been on Thunder Mountain? Uh, <laughs> don't sue me, the mouse. Anyway, so Thunder Mountain. Yeah, pretty much everything in here is included, short of like the custom things like this, but you can do that yourself. You see this painting? You can click on paintings and put in a custom image. So you could essentially import a lot of custom assets into Dungeon Alchemist in many different ways. There's many poster boards, signs. We have these, a whole section of assets called abstract assets. So you can like place tokens down that are flat or you could make a carpet or blood splatter, whatever, really. <laughs> Dirty rollers. So I asked my wife to bring in the cat later after Seymour comes in. She's given Seymour a bath, and then after Seymour is after we have doggo time, then we're gonna have uh, kitty time. So you guys have never really met my cat. Um, those of you who have been around for a bunch of the streams, and I honestly, he is such a cutie, and he is essentially more like a dog because. He was raised by two dogs, essentially. He had two brothers. I love this. It's kind of a combo between Space Mountain and Thunder Mountain is the vibe I'm getting, Sack. Or maybe a little bit of the Indiana Jones ride. Pashoisha. You know what I really want? Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. That looks great. I really want um, the, the mine carts to be able to attach to these and just follow the rails in a loop. Like it's an option for the animation. As long as the rail keeps going, it'll keep following it in a loop. <laughs> Wouldn't that be awesome? Oh, well, I have died so many times in this. That is a great use of the uh, the abstracts there. My tokens are like all over the place. Now, let's check. Oh. Up on, move on up. Okay. Smile for your please mold portrait. Where's the camera? I don't know what to smile at. Psst. Oh, stuck. Oh, it's a portrait drawer. Someone's drawing the portrait live. Man, that's dedication. Yeah, I mean, we've already, I've already created an abstract for a waterfall, for instance. Um, just to give you an example. Uh, Excalibur asks, Question, this may have been addressed already, but would it be possible to add an option to color abstracts as different water types, like within the objects, so they can be merged into the terrain? Yes. Oh, uh, this map is beautiful, by the way, Sack. It's very well done, my man. You've done fantastic on this. Just this part of the ride, like this area alone is fantastic. It's very beautifully well designed. It's got like Disney park ride vibes all over it. I love it. You've done a great job. Oh, there it is. Yep. See, there's a waterfall. Perfect use. So this is an abstract plane. Um, 
right here. Uh, so this one here is a customizable vertical pane. And I actually, my wife, I commissioned her to make a bunch of abstract assets when we first uh, launched this feature in our, not this last update, but two updates ago. So like a, a little over a month ago. You know, but uh, it was a month and a half ago, two months ago, something like that. Um, anyway, when we uh, when we launched that feature, I commissioned her to make a bunch of different assets, some blood splatters, hands, blood smears on the wall, like all sorts of random stuff. Hey, um, say Sue, can you link that, my man, by chance? Uh, the the uh, asset channel. Let's see here. Come here. Let's look at the giveaway, see how much time we got left. There's about two and a half minutes left to enter the giveaway. So essentially, she kind of just drew up this waterfall. And as you can see, it can be scaled up to be a huge waterfall. And I've seen a few people in our community use it. How you doing, Reb? But these assets give you a lot of versatility. Not only do they have like a color slider on them so you can change them and use them as different things. Um, you can also insert an image to them. And uh, let's see, where are my... I think they're in here. So let's look at like blood. Let's do like a hand schmear. And so you could put that up on the wall and it just kind of looks like something dragged on the wall, like a blood, you know, bloody hand. Uh, I also, there's some other ones that I made that are, well, she made, sorry. I always just say that. My favorite is the spooky eyes because I wanted to make like a spooky forest where you could put these in the forest kind of peeking out. So you could just kind of put these in between the trees and it just looks like that traditional like cartoon forest where the eyes are peeking out at you. Anyway, we got about a minute and a half left on the giveaway. So make sure you follow the stream and type exclamation giveaway. Um, so you have a chance to enter. It will be an automatic drawing. So best of luck to you all. And then after that one, we'll be just doing another giveaway because that's how awesome we are. By the way, if you are the winner of the giveaway, you will have to claim the key. Type exclamation claim in chat within a minute. You have 60 seconds to claim or it'll be automatically re-rolled and given to someone else. We do that because, you know, sometimes people enter the giveaway and leave and it wastes the entire group's time. So pay, please pay attention if you win. <clears throat> I'm gonna count down the giveaway if I can here. I'll count down the last 10 seconds, okay? We are getting pretty close. Say, Sue, after the uh, the giveaway ends, can you just do a, a like a link drop, a bunch of them? Oh, for sure, Wolf Gold. Being able to adjust stairs like these ones. So in our last update, um, when you disable collisions, which has been around forever now, uh, like uh, almost six, seven months, but now you can raise objects on the Z axis, on the Z axis when... Um, the collisions are disabled. I think the left click in my mouse is going out because it just stops selecting things. Anyway, you get the idea. Excalibur, make sure you claim. Claim, 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 claim. It is a one-time purchase. Once you purchase the app, um, it is yours to keep. It's a lifetime license. Uh, and all of our current updates from our stretch goals from our Kickstarter, which I think there's six left now, uh, will be free to you. Anybody who owns Dungeon Alchemist gets that for free. So every update is free for the foreseeable future. Once we leave early access, then we will begin offering paid expansions for things like Cyberpunk or, um, you know, S Steampunk, uh, all that stuff. Okay, Excalibur, congratulations. Six left. What are we talking about? You know what? I did not count it down for the thing, but Excalibur did claim it. They claimed it. Okay, Excalibur, um, congratulations first off. Can we uh, all be very good sports and give Excalibur a, a pat on the back, a big congratulations? Because we can't all win, but we can all be winners, right? 
Uh, just wait a moment, Excalibur. I just pulled up your account. I'm going to generate a key, and then I will uh, whisper it to you. So you will get a, a whisper message from me. I just have to fill out a bit of paperwork. As you can imagine, when I issue a key, everything has to be tracked. And, you know, it's just to make sure everything's being done by the book. I'm going to send you a, a just a whisper really quick. And then the next one here is the key. So you will get a whisper or a personal message on your Twitch. Uh, if you're on PC, it's up in the top right. There's an icon with it. It looks like a little chat message icon. Um, or if you're on mobile, I think it's also maybe in the top left. Anyway, once you get that message, please respond in the message. And then if you could in chat, confirm that you, uh, that you got your key. I'm pretty sure there's six left, yes. So the next one is confirmed as the treasury, which is going to be a very, very, uh, let's just say a very rich update. You got it? Okay, awesome. Congratulations. And we always like to confirm here in chat because it legitimizes the giveaway. We do digital keys so you can redeem them right away. I really don't like doing physical giveaways because that requires shipping and there's a lot of variables there. You know, the shipping, it could get stolen right off your porch. Or it could get destroyed in transit. Or, you know, you could get it and, uh, you know, be dishonest. There's lots of things that happen. You could do whatever you want with it. You can give it to a friend. You can give it away on your own channel. You can redeem it on your own account. It's your key now. It's a good question. I do not know, Dirty Rollers. Did I do another dad joke without even realizing it? Man, I am getting old. I mean, I do have an official license to make dad jokes. I, I have a, you know, my son is 17 now. I, I can make dad jokes, right? <clears throat> After those six stretch goals... That's when we will begin offering things like paid expansions that go above and beyond the fantasy aesthetic that was the core promises delivered from our Kickstarter. <clears throat> yeah, actually, you know what? I asked yesterday on our socials, on Facebook and on Twitter, what everyone would like to see um, when it comes to you know, uh, what you would expect to see or find in our next update, the treasury. Um, you know, there's lots of treasure items over the, you know, let's just, let's just be honest. Humans love gold and jewels and silver and platinum shiny things in general. We're like, we're basically like crows. And honestly, like uh, there's a lot of different cool shiny stuff out there. And I think we could uh, contribute a lot of neat ideas. Um, I think the reason we're asking, though, is because we're in a unique position this update to be able to make a lot more assets than normal. I don't know how much that means exactly. I can't give you an exact number. But typically, we do two to 400 assets. So who knows? Let's see. Okay. I am going to open a new map. What, what say ye? Ooh. Golden Sausage. Sausage, I saw your post. You've been seen. Hmm. So, my favorite thing to do is sort by recent. Because 
I feel a lot of maps, the way that Steam Workshop works is it definitely favors like the popular ones and sometimes really good ones go unnoticed because the popular ones stay on top. Which, I mean, it's it's weighted in favor of, like, algorithmically favored towards the ones that are the most popular. It makes sense. But then those ones just always stay on top. You know what I mean? It doesn't ever drop them off. So, ooh, this one looks cool. It also is a nice little city map. Let's check it out. So this could be a decent, decent overworld, like, region map if you're up high enough. Um, if you look at it technically... You know what I mean? But because the fence is there, you more would want that to be like a city or a village. Very nice looking though. Got here. So a lot of the assets used in this are obviously ones with roofing. So here we have a doghouse. Here we have a shed. Um, I know there are like outhouses. Um, these here are grandstands. All of these different things have roofing and add to the aesthetic. This is one of my favorites over here, the boat. I would love to see a house with a boat roof, by the way. Um, so I grew up in southern Utah, in a really small town in southern Utah. And near there was a national park called Pine Valley. And or is it state park. Either way, in that park, there was a little church in the town next to it. And the church is like really old. It's like 150 years old. It's one of the oldest structures in Utah. And it was made by a boat builder. And they could, uh, asked him to make it. And he didn't know how to make roofing. So he just made an upside down boat. Anyway. It's interesting, when you're inside of the church, it's like a big, rounded ceiling that looks like a boat. And, um, I mean, that's, you know, like, Vikings, if I'm not mistaken, used to make their roofing that way because they were excellent boat builders and the, the boats kept the water out the other way, so why not the, the reverse, right? Anyway, it's an interesting concept and it was pretty cool. And it's held up all this time, so... There's not many old structures in the U.S. when, like, there's probably park benches in Europe that are older than most structures in the U.S., but still, I mean, old relative to U.S. terms. This is very well done. I like just that there's little details here and there. I feel like I could just kind of, you know, become a part of this village. Let's take a dive in. Oh, man, I feel like a giant. That cobalt actually was more like Godzilla. Okay, let's see here. Um, we got about five and a half minutes left on the giveaway. I'm just uh, making everyone aware. So make sure you enter. That's true, Sack. Yeah, see, like, for me, like, driving five to eight hours is, like, no big deal. But, like, I grew up in Utah, and Utah is, like, from south, southern Utah to the tip of southern Utah to the tip of northern Utah is like an eight-hour drive. That's just one state. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Okay, I, I, I just want to try something. I want to give this cobalt a chance to use. Let's see. Let's put them on just too big I didn't even have to scale him up he just got big <laughs> I remember when this mode first came out someone did like a Titan video Currently, the only methodology is using the abstract as intended. I don't know if we plan to add different skins to them in that manner. However, we will have an update called Water Worlds, which is essentially all things water. You know, 
which when it was advertised it shows kind of like a river and we're intending to do like waterfalls and i would imagine would do like currents and manipulative things with water water type effects you know, geysers things like that these are more like structures with roofs on them that were scaled up i mean there's a couple like this shed here there is a dog house there is a couple chicken coops here. This person just got really creative with the available assets. This is an outhouse. But they scaled them down to make it look like a small village. However, I will say this, that both of our devs have expressed interest to make an overworld biome at some point. Um, as well as roofing is something that's like an, a, an elephant in the room that they want to work on. So both of these things are something that they're interested in addressing with time. Um, basically, they want to make an overworld biome because, you know, you should be able to make world maps with Dungeon Alchemist. It's the one thing I feel, and I don't really like, I'm not really trying to dog on our product, but we do struggle with overworld biomes, making huge maps or make, because we don't have a lot of assets that cater to that design or need. Now, there are some very creative builders that have made it work. Don't get me wrong. But, I, you know, there, there's some out there that do much better. And, you know, pat them on the back for that. So, our, our lead dev has said in a stream just a couple weeks ago when he was a guest that he wants Dungeon Alchemist to be the only map maker you'll ever need from start to finish. So, I would assume that means world maps. That would mean, you know immersion with your your cities and uh you know building all sorts of battle maps and different environments and everything roofing and ceiling is something that definitely is on the devs mind and they're constantly figuring out a way to make it work with all the weird crazy structures we make you know that would be pretty cool huh uh D, &D world now, I will remind you, I'm the community manager. I am not a dev. So while I do know a lot about Dungeon Alchemist and I get to peer behind the curtain, get a lot of inside information, I don't know everything the devs know and plan. Um, so, you know, or how to, you know, fix every problem within DA or how it will be addressed mechanically. But I do have a lot of answers to a lot of questions. Yeah, let's do that. Let me get rid of the cobalt real quick. Do you want me to make this wintery or switch to a winter one? Do you want me to winterize this one? Because I can winterize it real quick. Oh. Hey, we've got a, a special guest. Hold on, everyone. Got a special guest arriving. Oh. See more time. Puppy time. That was just one click. We plan to add other weather options like that. I call it winterizing. I know that is the opposite of what winterizing is because technically you're getting something ready for the winter so it won't like wear down in the winter. But I like to call it winterizing because it quite literally just turns any, any map, any old map into winter. And I can just change it back in one click as well. There's a lot of things you can actually just change in a couple of clicks. So let's say you wanted this water to be I oh, let me undo that actually. I'll make the water over here ice. And then or just a couple of clicks, flip it to snow, and now it's ice and you know, it really fits that aesthetic very well. Let's turn off that water wheel though, because why would it be spinning anymore? Uh DD &D world, you gotta claim it, you gotta claim it! Exclamation claim, D&D &D world. Sorry, I'm like talking about this, talking about Doggo. Look at that. I guess you're a part of our community whether you like it or not. Oh my goodness. Now, now I know Isaac. Um. So... 
Uh, this, everyone that's new here, this is my puppy, Seymour. He is kind of just a bit of a guest on the stream. He just got his weekly bath. He's such a good, oh, he's waiting for a tree. Hey, mom, okay. Gotta eat it careful though. Careful. It's a toothbrush bone. It basically it, it makes his mouth smell better. And... Oh, it's your birthday! Nice, congratulations and happy birthday. Perfect. And we just hit fifteen hundred followers, by the way. So that's awesome. Thank you so much, everyone, for helping us hit that. Um, I really appreciate you all as a community. Honestly, you guys and gals, I, I love this community so much. It's such an inviting and fun place to be, and I just love running, you know, I love helping you all out the best I can, answering questions, you know, being there for you all, supporting the creator community, supporting GMs, supporting charities and whatnot. Um, I really do love our community so much. Um, and just, you know, kind of throwing that out there, remember, if you are, you know, a com Creator, whether you make maps for commission or you are you know a streamer or a youtuber or you know maybe you're doing community work with kids and you think you're teaching them D&D &D, you know anything like that talk to me P reach out to me maybe we can work something out and DA can maybe help you out you know um, not necessarily you know monetarily but maybe we can work out a situation where we can try and help you out with promotion situations or um, you know whatever you know help the charity any way we can etc or donate keys etc um a lot in our community know that i love to assist other creators and the people in our community any way i can sorry for getting sidetracked there i know seymour is the show right now but he was eating his bone so i was kind of talking away it was that yummy no more bone you ate it all could be there also could be a well nearby, like um, sometimes wells won't melt over, and then like they they won't well they won't freeze over completely, so they might steep a little bit. Okay, give me just a minute. When I don't have a puppy in my hands, I will definitely issue you a code. Oh my gosh, never mind. I got another pet on the way. One second. Um. Um, everyone, I'm really shy and doesn't normally come on the stream. And uh, he usually just hides out when I'm this loud on stream. But I was uh, lurking around on uh, yesterday on <laughs> uh, on streams. And um, basically, I was asked about my cat. And here it is. He is huge. His name is Montrezar. Has are you here, man? Dirty rollers. That's big. He is huge. Him's very big. The long boy. He's huge. <laughs> He's a Maine Coon. He's a Maine Coon. I call him my little lynx. Oh, the cat's bigger than the dog for sure. Oh, he's very handsome. My, my, he's daddy's boy. He snuggles me all the time. Loves being held and snuggled and loves belly rub. Like I tell you, he was raised by dogs. So we used to have two other dogs that passed away from old age in the last year. And um, he was a kitten when they were like, you know, middle aged. And now he's like, what, five? So five six you know and so he's raising the puppy and it's just funny because he's a cat but also has dog traits and now the dog is a dog with a few cat traits and they play, play together huh? they play. oh they play with string together they do like it's just cute oh he loves chilling with me oh my gosh really dang that's crazy <laughs> wolf cult holy cow if 
Honestly, he'd lay on me like this all the time. Yeah, he has a chair next to me in the office. It's an old, ripped-up office chair that's just worn out. We put a blanket on it, and he'll lay on it for, like, hours. Yeah, of course. One second, D&D &D world, okay? It's, uh... It's okay. Okay. I have so much cat fur on my... And, oh, my gosh. Buddy. <laughs> I am cat. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> okay. No, oh, I get it, Jeff. All right, I, I get it, D&D &D world. You got lots of questions. Jeff is the cat, not you. Okay, uh, let me send you your code first. I'm whispering you right now. Give me one second. I'm issuing the key. Music stop? It did. Oh. Oh. Oh, wait, let me see it. Okay, that was a lot of fur. I'm sorry about that. I was just, I couldn't even breathe. Okay. So I am issuing... Your code. Right now. Okay, got a little distracted by the pets. Um, okay, so I just sent you a code. Uh, check your whispers really quickly, DND World Com. Confirm you got that key from the giveaway. And then um, if you could confirm publicly. Oh no, you could ask here, Phil, this is what this place is for. These streams are meant for that. I just got a little distracted. My wife just barraged me with, with cuties. So uh, anyway. Let's show you how an export would work. So let's say you wanted to export this particular map, right? So you set up the map how you want it. Let's say you wanted it to be at night in the winter. So you change the lighting. Maybe you want it to have kind of a, an Aurora type feel. So you give it a little filter. Congratulations again, my friend, and welcome to our community. Um, and so you could set it up however you want it, right? And then you go to File, Export. Now, Right off the bat, you have a ton of export options, but I will say the big three, Foundry, Fantasy Grounds, Roll20, you can export directly for them. We have direct export support, meaning with the exported files, we'll import directly into those systems with relative ease, and it supports lighting. In, in, in the case of Foundry and Roll20, it's dynamic lighting. I'm not 100% certain with Fantasy Grounds. Uh, it supports walls windows doors line of sight etc so it will generate all that information in a file that's gen that exports with the map so you get either an image or an animated map video file and then the text file which is usually like a json and then you import that into foundry and there you go so in this case let's do foundry okay if you wanted the map to be just a still image you select still image you have all these different options Okay, awesome, thank you. It's an XML file, that's good to know. I think it's a script for uh, Roll20 Pro. So you could set perspective 3D, limited perspective, or just flat top down. When you're flat top down, it flattens the map out, whereas with your when you're in the different 3D ones, it uses the limited 3D perspective granted by our objects and their designs. You can ask, you know, say whether you wanna render the lights or not. You can pick the quality, typically with, BTTs, I recommend exporting at 150 DPI or 72 DPI. Foundries tends to struggle with 300 DPI and even 150 DPI maps. I think it has something to do with the size of the map mixed with the DPI. It just struggles. Anyway, um, so I typically will just export at 72 DPI. 
I pick small borders, but you can pick normal borders to get a little bit more berth around the side. But the, the small borders will give you the closest border without cutting off any of the 3D assets or too much of them. You can set a color scheme, scheme. so let's say you want it to be grayscale for noir or print friendly. You can also enable a grid. Um, however, if you're exporting for a VTT, no need to enable a grid. You turn it on in your VTT and it'll line up automatically to the size as long as you set it to five foot squares. Um, and it, it's, you know, the same size as the map. But you could set the grid if you want to to square or hex. Just choose a bunch of different colors, transparency. In uh, the hex, you could set the hex size. Anyway, a whole bunch of options. Yes. Honestly, the higher DPI is usually meant for printing, for like poster size or bigger. It's typically not meant for VTTs. You want to keep the file size lightweight and tiny because any huge files will be a big burden on your players. They have to load that. Let's say they're playing on like a tablet or a, a not a very good laptop or an old computer. Those com players will struggle with a bigger, bigger map. Yeah. Interesting, Ladybird. It's good to know. Okay, now notice up here in the top, it says VTT import guidelines. You can actually click that and it'll open a link on your, uh, your interwebs and give you instructions for that VTT. So this particular one is the foundry direction. Step one, export the, from Dungeon Alchemist. Make sure you export the right format. This will give you a JSON file. So make sure you export as foundry. Create a new scene in foundry. Before you can import a map, you need to create a new scene. Import the data. So import the JSON file first, then configure and add the background image as the map you just exported. Hit save, and now you have a map with walls, line of sight, all that. Just to give you an example here, because I actually use Foundry. Let me... Load Foundry here. I've been testing a bunch of ETTs lately, uh, like all the big boys and a few of the new ones, and just to test compatibility with the various features that Dungeon Alchemist offers and see if it works with what uh, what they offer. Okay. Okay, so I bring. As you can see, this is a uh, a map I made actually, and it's up on the workshop. That's another benefit as an owner of Dungeon Alchemist. You actually get access to a ton, quite literally, a ton of free maps. Over thirty three hundred free maps at this point um, are available in our Steam Workshop, and we'll go over that in a minute. But as you could see here, this is actually an animated map that I created and imported to, for to Foundry. So we have moving lava, um, water that moves and you know kind of gives off a faint glow and kind of jiggle. We've got drills that drill into the ground and are active. The lights kind of move, ebb and flow. Welcome, Celtic Raven. Over here, I put steam on these pipes to kind of give off the idea that it's kind of got some water flow. Notice there's already a grid present. It's kind of faint. Here, right? And I have not used Foundry in a while. Anyway, let me show you walls, though. These are the walls that were auto-generated for this cave by our system, and when it imports to Foundry, it's already there. So you don't have to muck around with creating walls. Lighting, all that stuff is automatically as well. Nice, Celtic. I'm glad you're enjoying it. So this is just an example is a Foundry animated map that automatically imported. It does doors as well. This was a cave, so there is no doors. Probably not a good good uh, example. Here's another animated map. You don't have to do animated, by the way, but this one here generated with walls and doors. So these are the walls of this house, and then this would be a door. Um, if there were windows on the structure, it would also generate that. It automatically generates that. It'll generate lights, walls, 
line of sight information for the walls, cave walls, um, dynamic lighting, etc. It's very cool. And then you could do animated as either MP4 or WebM, and then you can export a still image as a JPEG. Anyway. Hey, see you, Seisu. Thanks for being here, my friend. Let's uh, open up another community map. So let's talk about Steam Workshop. So when you um, open Dungeon Alchemist at the very top here, there's a bunch of tabs, obviously, that most people don't really notice or pay attention to because in a lot of different software, that's a lot of extra stuff to learn. So the Steam Workshop tab is your friend, though. If you look at this, you actually um, have the option to open maps you've published, open maps you've subscribed to, browse Steam Workshop, publish your own maps. Say you made a beautiful map or even your first map and you want to share it. Whether it's, you know, whether it's a 1 or a 10, I feel all maps should be uploaded to Steam Workshop because that's just makes it that much better. The more, the merrier, right? But some people prefer quality over quantity. I, I think everyone should be encouraged to share their maps, but I do understand some people are shy. Uh, show them how a walkthrough vid works at some point, would you, Mac? Which, which, sorry, I apologize. Which, which walkthrough you wanted me to show them? Like walking through in first person or one of my YouTube videos or what are you talking about? Because pretty much all my YouTube videos are out of date now. I need to archive them. <laughs> Because we added caves, and now, so caves and sewers with pits and caves, it's like, you can pretty much make those with ease. Oh, first person and video export? Gotcha. Okay, well. You can place a token in the map. You're given a bunch of free tokens under characters, monsters, and NPCs. If you have a Hero Forge account, any of the miniatures you acquired through their uh, pro subscription, or if you purchased any miniatures as 3D digital minis to import them into other software or VTTs, they will show up here. So you can create your own minis and import them. For instance, this is a mini that I created and imported. Um, it's named Mac. It's MacGyver, the changeling artificer. Anyway, clicking on the character, you notice there's a bunch of little tool tips. You have one for its name, one to delete it. And the last one here, the icon, as I like to call it, the eyeball, allows you to go into first person mode and you can walk around. When in first person mode, you can take screenshots by clicking F on your keyboard, or you can record by hitting R. Um, and then it will record as you walk around or move, look around, etc. cetera. Um, and you can even interact with the environment to a limited degree. Anytime you see these little icons pop up like that, like that one here, that will actually allow you to interact with the environment, open doors, turn off lanterns, things like that. And when you do those things, um, that icon doesn't show when you're recording, it's not visible, so it's hidden from the recording. Yeah, we did two giveaways already, Will. Dose. However, if we hit 100 views, we'll do 100 viewers, we'll do another giveaway. Anyway, this looks really good. Love the skybox. Especially in this like mode with the kind of the neat lighting. It just kind of gives off a neat little like winter sky vibe. Yeah, I honestly, here's the thing, Gore. So some things to consider. I'm dropping frames because when you are in first person mode, Dungeon Alchemist is rendered twice. So it renders the first time the normal map, then it renders the second time as first person. So I'm essentially running two copies of Dungeon Alchemist and then I'm streaming it to you in 1080, 60 FPS, uh, 6,000 bit rate. So essentially something's got to give there and you're gonna, I'm going to drop frames because basically when you're in first person, that's the second instance of the program running and my computer unfortunately 
is uh, no longer the beast it used to be. But yeah, when you do it at home, like without running a stream, it's definitely less impactful. Running a stream is like running another third or fourth copy of Dungeon Alchemist. I can't change the rate of the internal recording, unfortunately. Yes, exactly, Lignox. All of our Kickstarter fantasy-themed updates will be 100% free, whether you join during our Kickstarter or purchase Dungeon Alchemist on Steam later, or if you want a copy today, all of the fantasy-themed Kickstarter stretch goals will be free. So our next update, the Treasury, free. We have... There's six, actually, uh, that we discussed today, earlier. Um, let's see. There's Treasury, Tricks and Traps, that's two. Fun with Objects, three. Um, let's see. Uh, Water Worlds is four. High Seas is five. And then I think Instant Dungeons is six. So that's six. Unless I missed one. Oh, magic. Was that, did I say magic? Maybe, maybe seven. So I could be wrong. So there's a bunch of different ones coming up. Um, you know, it's hard to say how fleshed out things will be by that point. But I think above and beyond our stretch goals, I would say almost anything besides, you know, like hot fixes and streamlining the product would probably be a paid update, you know, like, but if it's a paid update, I would imagine it would be very flush. It would be a very full, you know, tons of room types, biomes, objects, etc. Show us some green screen stuff like what? Hey, well, foxes, how you doing? You talking about the abstract, my friend? Okay, yeah, we were showing them earlier on stream, but I'll show them again. So with abstracts, I mean... You can do a lot of different things. One great example here. Um, let's see. We have the ice fishing hole. We could also put another one out here. Hmm. Actually, this one has a little, little fish in it that my wife drew. So you, you can have like a little ice fishing hole there and do stuff like that. Oh, you can do tons with these things. So, I mean, we gave you a lot of customizable shapes so you can create whatever you want. Um, I mean, walls, rounded walls, corners, floor tiles, tokens, pillars, cubes. So what I like to assume, like if we did a cyberpunk aesthetic, it would be like a massive update patch that would be, you know, if it was a paid update, like a, you know, a paid expansion. From my understanding, when it was explained to me, if we did stuff like that, it would be like, you know, probably four or five biomes, you know, dozen or so room types, probably thousand plus objects, you know. You know, I, I, and that's more of just like a ballpark figure, but that's what I was led to believe and, and understand. Honestly, I don't have an answer for that, uh, Main Swain, because honestly, like every one of our updates is different in their own regard. Some are more challenging than others. Um, you know, this these last two updates, you know, they, there was one that took about four months to get out it was delayed a little bit and then the next one only took a month and a half so 
I some updates are less challenging than others, um, but each update lays the groundwork for future updates. Our dev really likes to approach big problems in steps by taking foundational steps and layers to make sure they work really great down the line. So things like Z-axis manipulation is so we can do all axis manipulation later. Uh, things like Hero Forge tokens, it was a foundational step and you know abstract assets and the workshop are foundational steps towards 3d imports of your own so if you maybe are a 3d sculptor or designer you can import some or if you buy tokens online and packs you can import them etc so keeping that in mind there is a lot of stuff on on the menu going forward um exactly dag dag said it best Every, almost every update drops a hook or a foundational layer that essentially preps for the next one. Um, Celtic Raven, we have a suggestion board and roadmap. It's on Upvotee. Uh, Dad, can you drop the Upvotee link, my man? Um, and essentially, the roadmap shows all of our planned updates, including the different um, stretch goals, uh, features that our dev has picked from the suggestion board and put as planned or will work on and you know implement at some point the suggestion board is also a great place because if you have an idea first look on the board search a few different variations of your suggestions see if it exists already because it probably does a lot of suggestions end up being merged with others or already exist so um or something you can already do in da and you probably weren't aware of so just make sure then uh create your suggestion and then the more people vote for it the easier it is for the devs to notice it Uh, Celtic Raven Steam automatically updates when you open it the next time. So if we had a new update, it'll automatically update. Plus, if you want to keep up to date with all the information about our updates coming out, we have a Discord server where we drop teasers. Currently, uh, we're kind of in the early stages of development for our next update, the Treasury. So the assets and uh, stuff available isn't kind of in a share state. So we're not dropping any teasers yet for our next update, but very soon we will be. Um, but in our Discord or on our socials like Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Reddit, we're everywhere to accommodate to everyone. So if you have a social network press presence, pick one, or if you like them all, use them all. Uh, we post on them pretty regularly. I'd say Twitter and Discord are the ones we're the most active on. Hey, see you, Abydos. Have a good one, my friend. Okay, let's move on to another map because we've been looking at this one for forever. So going to Steam Workshop, you click Browse Steam Workshop. Let's say you want to find a keep. Search keep. Bunch of them come up. As I stated earlier, there's 3,300 plus maps on here. These maps are all free to download and use in your campaigns. They're not for you to use to resell. Keep in mind, this is a creative commons type space so these maps are free to use but at the same time um you know there's a lot of maps on here that can really make your life very easy if you're looking for a certain style i know a lot of people who you know will browse all over the internet and patreons and reddit and looking for maps and then find one that'll fit you know that's a great thing you can do within dungeon alchemist you can either make your own maps by hand use the ai to speed up and make some quick maps or you can browse the workshop of the over 3,300 maps and pick and download them and use them right away as well. Celtic uh, Raven, what do you mean linked maps via database? Please explain. Elaborate. Let us, uh, let's search for something else, actually. Hmm. Let's search for cave. Well, I do know layers or levels is something that we plan to implement at some point. However, linking your maps is something that is usually the responsibility of a VTT. 
like linking them together so they they work together smoothly so like if you had multiple layers of a map or multiple maps that were multiple levels of the same map you would uh use your vtt a virtual tabletop to essentially you know there's for instance in foundry there is a, a very cool module called monks active tiles and let's say your players go to a ladder or a staircase or go into a cave entrance it automatically loads them into the next portion of the map cues it up um there's an app called dynamic dungeons for tabletop play does the same thing so you essentially queue up all your maps and stages so when your players go through them it goes to the next one so you would make your maps in dungeon alchemist you know make beautiful 3d looking animated maps and then import them into something like that it means the maps are linked together so one would be number one one would be another number two it's a great way to link multiple you know maybe you carve a city up into 12 smaller sections or districts so it's easier to make and more easier for your pc to handle and you link them all together um like stitched together or you know they're automatically linked together and somehow what wolfie check out this lava cave that looks pretty cool monks active tiles so it would automate it like a video game i think i i'm not a hundred percent but i think you can actually do a loading screen in between two so you could have like funny little t tips for your players you know you could do screenshots in dungeon alchemist and be like just give them fun tips or just have a funny like funny like reminders or sequences or screenshots from their adventures or the maps you've used and then it would go to that different uh different portion so let's say you go from outside of a building to inside a building or outside a cave to inside or up a stairs yeah monks active tiles i have to say that i do like your name walking There's a few modules that do the same thing. <laughs> so, um, versus the beard, welcome to the stream. My name is Mac. I am the community manager of Dungeon Alchemist. So you actually wandered into the official Dungeon Alchemist stream and channel. So a great place to be, great place to ask questions because we'll do our best to answer them to the best of our knowledge. Um, anyway, so Dungeon Alchemist is primarily a map maker and immersion tool. So while, while it is very amazing looking and offers a lot of utilities that make it seem like it is a virtual tabletop or a game space, that is not its primary function. Um, now that doesn't stop our community from making it work that way. I've seen few Twitch DMs use Dungeon Alchemist as as a, t a limited virtual tabletop, and they'll actually move their players around because we have things like, for instance, a grid that you can enable, a hex or a square grid. So let's turn on a grid here, and then we'll drop a token in the map, just to confuse you even more, because why would you have tokens, right, if you're not a virtual tabletop or a play space? So you can go into the tokens in first person mode, record see things like chase scenes, intro scenes where they walk into an area and kind of look around for the first time. You can, uh, you know, use it as an immersion tool for screenshots, for handouts, etc. Um, lastly, if you're really creative, you could, in, in theory, place your player's tokens and move them for them. But there's really no easy way for all your players to remotely access Dungeon Alchemist and move their tokens. There is a way to remotely share Dungeon Alchemist with one friend on your Steam friends list. That's just like a Steam feature. And our our moderator, Dag, has played around with it. And they were able to, you know, kind of control it. But they could also manipulate the map. 
and do things to the map so they could potentially move like these rocks to the bridges on accident so realistically i mean if your players don't mind relinquishing a little bit of control they could just tell you where they want to move and you can move them if you want to play all within dungeon alchemist but that's not really its primary function it's meant to make maps uh and, and help immerse your players in those maps by giving you beautiful 3d assets and walls and structures uh as well as 3d looking exports in top down um animated maps or still maps uh as well as uh you know the options to get in there and take screenshots dive in with uh this cinematic mode camera which i call like a drone camera so you could do like fly throughs of the map like stuff like this just recorded it's very interesting really the only limit is your own imagination but we're kind of on the cusp of the next generation of tabletop gaming where everything is going to become so immersed and almost production level at your table you know people are adding cool lighting and effects in their their tabletop game play spaces and you know sound effects and all sorts of things that used to be just like a tape deck in your room that you would play and pause and you know but now it's getting crazy and with digital tools you can immerse your players more than ever um the damn challenge runs for two weeks uh joker so currently we're just another week away so we will be running the you can enter the Feywild holiday one until friday the 7th uh april 7th and you can enter through the discord as always in the damn challenge section just make sure you read the rules pinned at the top and follow them because if you don't follow the rules your entries don't count yep we're right in the middle yeah you can make infinite loops oh yeah versus the beard so like parts of this map are definitely handmade i don't want to misconstrue you the thing that's cool about dungeon alchemist is you can use the ai to rapidly generate maps or you can roll up your sleeves dive in by hand and build maps by hand so there are some very intense crazy builds that were all built by hand or you can you know here let me show you a, a generated build so we'll go to new map i'll let you make the map versus the beard so first and foremost i'm just going to walk you through some of the basics here you have print options or digital so if you're playing in person you may want to print your map but some people play in person on a tv or a projector or still use vtt space in a in person so digital is ideal with print we have a bunch of predefined paper sizes so the map is fixed at that size you can't make it any larger once it's set okay in print in digital once you set your map size it can be shrunk or expanded later and i'll show you that in a minute or two versus the beard are you still here I would like for you to pick a terrain type out of all of these except for dark parchment dark parchment is kind of like a blank a blank background more meant for kind of maybe just putting a, a like a, a house on a blank parchment so there's no distraction around the outside maybe they're limited to being inside of a tunnel or something and you don't want them to be able to feel like they can leave that space okay so we're going to do jungle now i would like you to pick an elevation so you have all these different ones there. So pick one of these elevations and then we'll move on to the next section. Greater. Okay. Uh, I would prefer we leave dense growth on with with a jungle because it really is defeats the purpose if you don't but that's just my two cents now we're gonna pick a water um so you can go no water river lake lakeside island lava lake lake flow okay hey how about this lignox you pick this one for water for us pick our uh, water flow please I was just giving you the opportunity to create a, a, a map through the cloud. Hey, see you, Dag. Have a good one, my friend. Lakeside? Okay. So we're going to just leave it no weather because we're going with a jungle, a snowy jungle. It kind of seems counterintuitive. 
and then you have three room placement options water level plateau and mountaintops what this means in english is when you generate a room later using our ai room generator it will be generated at that height and so essentially water level would be at all water level so in this case we're doing lakeside i recommend doing water level so the rooms we generate or buildings we generate would be at water level plateau is a little bit higher and then mountaintops is as high as you can put it up Vicky, thank you for the raid yay we're getting raided Woo! how are you nikki sorry that that was a very loud yell i apologize can we uh can we do a big thank you for nikki nerds out in coming with her 10 raiders give them a thank you so much for being here nikki needed food oh no i i guarantee after a long stream she's definitely hungry god peace every time your name man every time <laughs> <laughs> welcome raiders thank you for being here from the dungeon alchemist community to the nno community i really appreciate the raid thank you so much okay we're going to generate this map at water level we're teaching uh, a new viewer how map generation works with the ai so i click generate and in just a few seconds as you can see here the map is generated Hey, see you, Nikki. We'll, we'll chat later for sure. You have a good afternoon. Thank you for the raid. Go get some food. That's weird that it generated water on both sides. That's more not lakeside. So, oh, I guess there's like a little strip there. Okay, so... As you can see, it randomly generated this jungle. Now, let's say you don't like it. Maybe you want to change it. You could just keep the same terrain type and generate a new one. Because, you know, you got endless possibilities with AI. So it essentially just made us a new one. Yeah, why not? We could... Here, let's pop into the drone camera. We'll do, like, a, an intro scene. I like to do, like, like a movie intro scene. It'd be like... Dun, 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 dun. And then then we get to the token over here. <laughs> Honestly, you never need to worry about environmental maps again as long as one of our biomes will suit your needs. And this is great. This particular feature, generating maps in a snap, as I like to say, is very great, uh, is useful for DMs who have players that throw them for a loop all the time. Raise of hands, DMs. How many times have you had a session planned? Not so much railroading your players, but you planned out encounters and, you know, like what they were going to do for tonight's session or today's session. And then they, as a group, randomly decided, I want to go over here today. I say this a lot. The group was like, say all of a sudden they want to visit Woblin the Goblin's hut in the forest. They're always compliant. Wow. You are a, uh, you, you, you got them under the thumb there, D&D &D world. Typically, I mean, the players run the show, right? So if they are wanting to go somewhere different than where you planned on, sometimes things don't always go that way. So, with that in mind, if your players go, you know what? We want to go remember Woblin the Goblin that we encountered in the dungeon three weeks ago. He told us to come by his shack anytime we needed to. I, we want to go visit him. And you're like, well, crap. I don't have Woblin the Goblin's hut prepped. I don't have a forest prepped. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Well, can we take a five-minute break? Let's do bio breaks, and I will get this set. So, you don't need to tell them you don't have it prepped. First off, keep that clean the chest. Let's uh, go over here. We'll set it to flat. We're going to go with a river. And we're going to go... Let's go... Evergreen clearing. Water level. No weather.
So we generated a forest. Let's hurry and make his hut. Let's see, under village, I know we had the cabin one, right? So let's use the cabin one to quickly use the AI to generate a hut. And I don't really like just square buildings, so I always like to add a little offshoots here and there, like closets or storage areas and stuff like that, like a hearth or whatever. So we're gonna generate that. So once you draw the shape and pick the room type, it'll generate a structure for you. I'm not really happy with this structure. So we're gonna go into draw room. And you can select the room and either click here or here to refresh it, regenerate it. I don't like how it's not putting the fireplace where I want, but I can change that. It'll only take me a couple seconds. I'm gonna just quickly move these objects, grab the fireplace. I'm gonna actually disable collisions and then hold shift so I can move that where I want. When you disable collisions, you can merge objects together, kind of snap them together to make new, like new unique objects. Or when an object snaps, it allows you to kind of freely move it more than you could before. Because a lot of objects like fireplaces, when object collisions are on, they'll snap to the wall. How big is what, Ricky? Okay. We're going to go into terrain because it seems like if this guy has lived here a while, he probably have like a path, right? Let's do one kind of leading over to the river. Maybe another one kind of leading further into the forest. A couple different pathways because Wobblin does stuff here, right? We'll add a small bridge. Using the Z axis, I can kind of just drop that into the ground so it seems to fit much more cleanly. So we're good there. Let's continue the road. Just add a little bit of life to this. And I'm trying to do it really quick because the players want to come to this place, right? Okay, now I'm gonna do some finishing touches using the object brush. This path would probably be relatively clear along it. Not a lot of shrubs on the path. Accidentally deleted that uh, bridge. We clear that. Let's go over here to nature. I want to thicken out this forest a bit because I wasn't impressed with how it generated it. So I just selected some evergreen trees. And then I really like to just give it a once over, you know, and a top down to kind of see what it'll look like. Also, it's really good as a DM to throw the grid on from time to time. There is a hot key to do that, by the way. I'm just not used to it yet. Alt G, you can turn on the grid quickly. And now you, you know, your players can, you can see an idea of how big this map would be for your players, how far they got to travel, what they might encounter on the way. Oh, Mondu, the... Yeah, Sack made that. Oh, the googly eye thing was really funny when we did that on stream, though. That was really funny. You could also do that, but I like this one. I made it myself. Anyway, so I made this map in the three, five minutes while we've been talking, teaching you how to do it. Go to File, Export. Let's say you're for Foundry. You can do a Foundry export. To save time, you can do it as an image. Export. And in moments... I'm just going to put this on my desktop here. Woblin's Hut. Boom. You know, if you've already imported a map into Foundry, you know the steps there. And within a few seconds, you've got Woblin's Hut. Well, uh, Lignox, when you're looking at this, let's say... Oh. Okay, when you look at this here... Let's say you're playing in something like Foundry or Fantasy Grounds or Roll20. Your players can't see inside this building because line of sight rules in tabletop games won't allow them to see in it unless they're near a window or the doors open or they're inside the building, right? They have to physically be looking in the building. So line of sight will block off the inside. 
Now, we don't have roofing on their, our AI-generated structures yet. With time, we hope to offer that, but it's not something we offer currently. Um, it's kind of one of the elephants in the room that our devs hope to address someday. In first person, you can go inside and there are some immersion options. Notice here, the sky is blacked out. You still see the trees over the edges. That's something we need to work on. But in first person, you can, in fact, black out the sky. Um, if you go into the AI room, the select room tool, and select a an individual room, here you can actually show the open sky or show, you know, basically, I don't think it should say ceiling. It should say, you know, blank. Um, and so it will black out the sky to kind of help with immersion so they don't necessarily see the sun or the moon. It's kind of a foundational step. We're getting there. I mean, I should learn, right, Nikki, to have, or Mondu, to have uh, the uh, the house ready, this uh, this place ready at all times, huh? Gosh. Anyway, let's uh, open up a new map. Let's go back to the workshop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Let's take a look at this. Yeah, no problem versus the beard. I hope I addressed all your concerns, your questions. Um, if you have any more, feel free to ask. We're going to be live for at least another half hour. So th these streams are like AMA format. I I'm here to answer questions. That's they're they're community driven. The whole point is to make sure that you know new people to our community understand how Dungeon Alchemist works. People who have been with our community forever learn new things all the time in these streams. We're here to have fun and learn, really. Oh, right, Mondu? The winter rising is cool. Let me winterize this one. It'll really mess with your head. We also have some really neat effects that we haven't even shown on stream today. So you see like these lightning effects and stuff like that. We have many different effects in this in Dungeon Alchemist. So these are actually like a Tesla coil. And if you have multiples near each other, they will chain automatically and create that effect. Uh, we have a few objects that do that. Um, the connected pole is another really cool one. So these ones like will connect ropes between them. Um, we also have effects that you can just place. So let's say we wanted a fire over here. Maybe some fire spilled out of the foundry. No. I, uh, okay. So, Rhiannis, when you export for foundry, all of the AI-generated rooms will automatically create uh, with the image, it'll generate a JSON file for Foundry. And that JSON file has all the information for lights. So any lamps, lanterns, you know, light sources of any kind on the map. Uh, walls, so walls of buildings that you drew with the AI are placed, you know, with freestanding walls. Um, or maybe a cave. If you drew a cave, it'll have the cave walls. Um, line of sight information generated by those walls is included. So Foundry takes the information and says, oh, these are walls, and it generates line of sight data within Foundry for your player's tokens relative to their location. So a player won't be able to see in a building unless they're inside it or near a window. It's really AI. It's really AI. Now, this map here was definitely not AI created. This one was made by hand. Think of Dungeon Alchemist as a multi-purpose tool, kind of like a Swiss Army knife of map making. It allows you to make maps by hand or use the AI to rapidly generate maps. Doors, windows, walls, lights, line of sight, all are generated. 
And with Foundry, we offer animated exports. So things like these lightning, you know, the, the coils or the, 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 the movement of the lava, you know, the lights flickering, you know, like the, the torches movement. Uh, if you have any objects that are moving, I know I saw some like gears over here earlier. These gears, these kind of things will all be animated in your maps. I'm actually in the process of compiling a compatibility chart, compatibility checklist that will show all, at least most, all major VTTs and Dungeon Alchemist's compatibility or non-compatibility to them. So what aspects of Dungeon Alchemist will work with them and what it what won't. So uh, that is forthcoming. Hey, see you later, Amanda. You're always welcome. I am testing above VTT right now, actually. Um, I made a huge list and it's growing constantly. Um, so above VTT is one on the list. And I had just tested and found out that animated maps from Dungeon Alchemist work on above VTT. I tested a map up to 60 by 60 and it worked. I didn't see it from the player side, however, but uh, above VTT has an option for you to host your own maps from like a, a source. So if you have a G Drive, a Google Drive account, you can upload your still or animated maps and then you take that link you make the map public, take that link and put it in the above VTT and boom, animated maps. Uh, as long as you set the grid size in above VTT to the same size you export it as and set the grid to five foot intervals, it'll also put the grid for the whole map perfectly. You just have to manually input that information. So if the map's a 40 by 40 or if it exported at 42 by 42, let me show you. When you export here, it shows you the map size. So this one will be 63 by 52. That is an interesting size. Anyway, so you would put these dimensions in above VTT in the grid section and make sure it's set to a five foot grid. And then you just set what you, how transparent or what color you want it and boom, done. What do you mean if the map isn't big enough, it'll ruin the quality? Please explain more. Yes, Foundry works with animated maps. And animated map exports have been available with Dungeon Alchemist now for about two-ish months, a little over two months. So you can write within Dungeon Alchemist, go to File, Export. If your map has any animation, whether it's, you know, lava, water, animated objects, etc., you can just select a video export. So let's say you want to do MP4 is meant for maps up to 2048 by 2048 or 4K resolution. So... We don't recommend doing larger maps. In this case, you would want to do a WebM export for a larger map. WebM scales up and allows you to work. Excuse me. I typically pick smallest file size. You can pick perspective yet again. Do low quality 72 DPI to keep the export time down. And excuse me, I'm getting hiccups. Drink a little bit of water. And um, yeah, once you export the map, it'll, it takes a while with WebM. Even if you have a beast of a computer, you can have one of the best computers on the market and it'll still take a few minutes. So please don't be offended. It's just a very, very intense process. These maps are, this one's much larger than 4K and we're rendering it frame by frame by frame in a higher than 4K resolution. It takes some time. So when it's all rendered, it's like rendering an animation. You get the animated map file in a WebM. You can then, you know, convert it to different sources or shrink it, can, you know, maybe even compress it if you want to try. And then you can import it into Foundry in this case is supported. Um, we also have a universal, you would do for above VTT, you would export right here under video export, okay? Um, what quality DPI did you export at Nuke Brains? See, that's the thing. I haven't tested above VTT enough yet. I'm very much in the new... I've been learning v above for two days. So when you're exporting on above, maybe try a higher quality DPI next time and see if it's any better. 
but I'm not going to do a video export right now because it takes a lot of computer resources and I don't want to risk crashing the stream. Oh, no big deal. Just next time, make sure you check. Try a higher quality and see if it's any better. And honestly, the thing is, is, you know, it could be because it's being hosted from like a third party source like Google Drive where they don't necessarily give you priority on the data and it could be just kind of a slow data transfer rate. One other thing could be if you're hosting the data through like a paid source, it might be better. Something to consider. I, and these are things I'm going to try and test with time, but it's going to take me a while to test every VTT. You know what I mean? Anyway. So if you use that video export, you can export for, you know, any any VTT or maybe you want to play, you play on a tabletop TV or a projector. You could just export a video and loop it to play there. You know what I mean? You shouldn't, but when Google Drive compresses it and shares it with people over the internet, it might cause some issues unless you preserve as much quality initially. The only reason I'm suggesting that is because... Like sites like Twitter, for instance, they butcher your videos. The video could be a very good quality. And then when you upload it to them, they use a really donk compression that ruins the video quality. So there could be something to do with the compression quality of Google Drive as its player. It's not really meant for a player, you know, so hosting it as a, a, a file player could be part of the problem. I mean, you can use DA in first person. I've had DMs that if they're a player, they're in a map, they'll have DA open on a second screen. And if their player says, hey, I would like to take a closer peek in this room to get a, you know, get an idea of what my player would actually see. And so they'll drop their token where their player is and let them look around in first person like this if they want to use their movement to move. Some DMs even uh, like, you know, you have to use inspiration to see first person. But I think that's kind of messed up because technically your player should be able to see in first person anyway. They're at a disadvantage in top down typically. You know what I mean? So with this case, you could say, yeah, give me a second. We'll drop you in. You can look around. Really gives them an idea of what they're looking at. These crafting tables. Oh, they have drawers and there's stuff under them. And Oh, okay. I'd like to investigate this area and look through the drawers and check for stuff. You know, it, it allows them to immerse themselves better. Uh, Lignox, I don't have an answer to that, unfortunately. I know it's on the to-do list for devs. And they're making foundational efforts toward, towards it constantly, but I don't know when. Yes, exactly. So above VTT, it's a web-based VTT. You're streaming the content from Google Drive, which I don't know what they do compression-wise with it. I would recommend a hosted paid-for file service. If you're paying for it, you're likely not to get, you know, lower compression or lower priority. And then lastly, your players on the other end, what's their internet? What is their computer like? You know, how well are they running above VTT to begin with? There's a lot of variables to consider. They're essentially streaming what you're playing on your end through the VTT. I understand Lignox, but things like first person were things were an afterthought for Dungeon Alchemist. Dungeon Alchemist is primarily a map making tool meant for export and top down or tabletop RPGs like D&D where they're primarily played in top down. I mean, what what version of D&D can you play in first person? Is there a VTT out there that allows that? I'm not familiar with one. So so remember that we're kind of limited by what is available. I do think we're on the cusp of a new generation of gaming. I said this earlier. We're getting really close to where, you know, things like VR and first person immersion is a real thing. I mean, I could imagine in the future where, a, a, you know, maps from Dungeon Alchemist could be integrated with systems like that. It'd be really cool where your token could be controlled from a VR interface, you know? That'd be awesome. But. I know, and we added that as an afterthought because people wanted it. Tokens, first person, token view, recording, screenshots, those are all immersion utilities added at the behest of our community. You can use the first person though as an immersion tool. It's not necessarily meant for immersion for play, it's meant for immersion 
for recording and taking screenshots for handouts. So maybe you stand outside of an inn the first time they're there and they walk in the door and look around inside a pub, you know, when they go in for the first time. Or you do a flyby of a dungeon when they enter it for the first time, like a cutscene. You can have a, a, a effects where something's burning down and they can see what it looks like from the first person perspective or a drone camera. This, this, the, this tools, these camera tools, they're really only limited by your own imagination. Heck, I've even seen people use them to play games, but that's not really their purpose. So complaining about, you know, oh, they don't do that. Why don't they do that is because it's not really its intention. You know what I mean? For sure and i hope i wasn't coming across as like abrasive or anything it's just um a, a lot of people ask me that they ask hey i really want to play i want my players to play dungeon alchemist first person so i i ask them how do they suggest to do that because there is not a system that supports that currently you know what i mean like there's no virtual tabletop that supports that so our maps couldn't export to that our maps weren't designed to be exported in a 3d map or an obj for 3d printing or to be an interacted in vr or a 3d environment really the only way to interact with them in 3d is within dungeon alchemist at this time you know who knows though with time things may change maybe dungeon alchemist might make their own vtt or add-on utility that allows it i'm, I'm not speaking from ex you know from background information but i you know i the way we're starting to develop Dungeon Alchemist as an immersion tool, it, it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me in a few, couple years down the road, maybe we offered something to complement it. And I mean, as you can see here, using terrain options, there is actually multiple flooring in this in this build. They've got levels and layers and stuff. This looks like a Baldur's Gate map. You know what I mean? You've got lots of layering and options to maneuver around this, this base for your players. Gotcha. I mean, yeah, you can use that tool in that way. And just, just remember that... I, I like to think that... I, and I think this is true... We're a very much more detail oriented than our players are as DMs, as GMs. We, we make the maps, we evolve the story, the canon, the lore, we create the NPCs. We're much more detail oriented as, as people typically. And our players are there to play and enjoy the environment. Some of them are much more detail oriented than others. You know, we have the note takers and the people who ask every question and try to manipulate the environment to their advantage. But the thing is, is a lot of times your players won't notice those things unless you point them out you know uh, oh my players are gonna hate that there's no roofs on these buildings i have honestly never even heard a player complain about it or heard a dm tell me a player complained about it i've heard a bunch of gms in our community say their players will complain about it but it's mostly their perspective not the players so i honestly like and i'm not trying to dog on gms i just want you to remember put yourself in their shoes they're looking at different things. They're tied up in the action. A lot of time, they're not really like, oh my gosh, this map, this wall here, I I can, I, there's no roof on it unless, it, it, but it's just a black spot because I can't see inside. I mean, some people may be like, oh, that's a bummer, you know, but they're in the end of the day, they're not going to really, you know. I just, I, I like to point that out, a very friendly reminder. I'm not trying to like, oh, be like, oh, they'll never notice it. Don't worry about it. I'm not trying to discount your feelings or thoughts on this. There definitely is some detail-oriented players that might notice things, for sure. But overall, I say the vast majority of players are there to play and just have fun and don't really notice. They'll say, oh my gosh, this looks so cool. This map is moving. There's electricity and there's a bunch of people to fight. And that's all they'll care about. Yeah. From a technical standpoint and a development standpoint, it is not very easy to put roofs in to Dungeon Alchemist within the in existing infrastructure and development foundation that already exists. So it is technically challenging, um, but there are ways to add roofs after the fact 
um, using, you know, tutorials, third party workarounds. You can do things like, uh, you know, you can use things like Photoshop in post and add a roof in post. You can, um, there is a method in our Discord, which I don't fully approve of because it's a crazy workaround modifying token data to make roofs that you can put on buildings yourself. Uh, it works, but it also is kind of buggy. Um, there is, you know, lots of ways you can kind of do it in a, in a third party workaround. I think there's actually a module in Foundry called Roofs. Because a lot of map making software like ours of the top down doesn't add a ceiling. So you can add roofing to it in the top down view. <laughs> Wolfie, oh my, why not, bro? <laughs> Yes, or, and I understand the first person immersion thing for some recordings and handouts. It's on the to-do list. It'll get there eventually. But for now, I think, you know, I think your players will be more thrilled that they can just see things in first person than worry that there isn't a roof. You know what I mean? The room is the mimic. The walls, the doors, everything is mimic. That should be an update. This map is beautiful, by the way. I've just been kind of staring at it. I'm really confused about this boat, though. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Just because, you know, it's on lava. To each their own. Okay, let's move on to a new map. Apply, erect, apply directly to the char. <laughs> Head on. <laughs> oh my gosh. I was reading a story about a mimic yesterday that... Okay, this player, the DM homebrewed a mimic that had a clutch of mimic eggs. And so it like had a hive or something. And they, the player somehow got a hold of one of the eggs and hatched it and tamed it through a series of like animal handling checks and it was their pet and then in a series in a in a combat their arm was cut off and they essentially rp'd to the mimic to help them because they were bleeding out and the dm allowed them to roll for this crazy thing and essentially the mimic merged onto their arm and it became part of their hand, kind of like Finn from Adventure Time with his grass arm or grass sword. And now it's part of his hand and the mimic can change into different tools and weapons. And it has an extra eye that they can use for perception checks and it can bite. Hmm. Let's search dragon. Uh, yeah, here's a different, that's a cool dragon lair. Let's check it out. Uh, do you, maybe it's based on the assets in it too now when you search, so it might be tied to the objects because you do have a dragon head in it. I don't know. I'll ask the devs if there's been any changes. Looks like someone made this dragon's lair. That would be my first thought is this, the search is now tied to the objects too to expand the search parameters, which is smart. 
I actually made a dragon's lair in one of my maps if you want to see it. So this map here, Dwarven Prospector Mine, is a map I, I made over a year ago, and then I remastered it when we had our Everything is Lava update. Um, it's bigger and better. The original one was 40 by 40. The new one's 60 by 60. It uses all the cool new cave mechanics, assets, and effects. Polymorph rooms? My goodness. Hmm... That is a question I don't even know how to answer. Could you elaborate on that, Nuke Brain? What would you want to accomplish there? I'm assuming you want rooms that can just swap shape and swap whatever's inside of them randomly. I mean, you can kind of polymorph rooms right now using our AI, but that's more for quickly shifting them to different things. Now, what I would recommend is you could, using tools like Monk's Active Tiles and Foundry, you could generate multiple versions of the same map where the rooms change. And so, essentially, throughout time or when things are activated or triggered, it just automatically swaps the map to the one with the different rooms. So here's a red dragon's lair I made. And then one neat thing about the caves, the cave terrain tool, you can actually erase. So the ceiling is present in the cave, so outside light doesn't leak in. But some caves have holes or breaks in them where light gets through, right? So I would assume a dragon's lair in a mountain, in a cave, it has a, a vertical or access point, a private access point. So you can use the erase cave ceiling, which I've already done here. Excuse me. Because I'm in low, you cannot see it. I remember. Notice it's much darker over here. But then the light bleeds through the cave here. I'll even show you by moving the light, and it'll definitely make it prominent. You can see the shadow rotating around. There's a point where there's a hole in the cave ceiling, and light leaks through. Anyway, I'm going to drop a token in here to kind of show you how that immerses from a first-person perspective. So notice the, the sky is blacked out. I'm in a cave. There's no, there's, the ceiling is just blacked out. You know, that's, that's the cave ceiling. Then when I get over here where it opens up, I can now see the sky through the opening in the sky. So if you were recording, you know, a cool like first-person walk into this dragon's lair... So th now, a weird benefit of this tool, um, if you have a cave somewhere on your map, you can actually um, use this tool to immerse buildings to, you know, blot out the sky in them as well without having to just turn them on. So like, like our sheds, for instance, you can blot out the sky over them when people go inside so it'll go gray and they don't see the sky. Yeah, it's because I've got all these effects and I'm in medium. See you later, Rianus. You're welcome back anytime. Uh, very generous with the loot. So here's the thing. I mean, a dragon's horde is going to be big. Dragons, especially red dragons, they pride themselves in their hordes. They usually have lots and lots of precious materials and have killed lots of people and, you know, looted lots of places. With that in mind, um, I mean, ultimately, I would assume they'd have a lot of loot. But in the world I'm creating where this exists and this loot pile is and all these crystals and stuff, mining is the primary industry in this valley. Um, and it's... Followed by, you know, all the refinements of metals and jewels. Um, but there's also a huge priority placed on the economy of farming and fishing in this environment. Um, so because the economy is so dependent on mining, etc., those things don't normally hold as much value to them. 
they have so much of it, it's devalued. Oh, Lignox, I didn't mean, I think you meant that in any way. I was more just or less kind of explaining where we're at from our position and why it's that way. And, you know, we're kind of, it's just a waiting game until the devs figure out a way to make the roofs generate for all the AI generated structures. I, I take no militia in anything you're saying. Sorry, I get a little passionate, obviously, and I, I love Dungeon Alchemist and I love my job with Dungeon Alchemist. I love our community. And I, I don't take it much personal, but at the same time, like, I get very passionate explaining what we're doing and how things are working. And so sometimes if I'm, like, I just talk loud on stream. So if I seem abrasive or if I seem defensive, it's mostly just me being, you know, very passionate and very, like, excited about what I can share. And also just being like, unfortunately, I don't have that answer. Yeah, let's open a new map because this one chunks the stream. Let's see. I think we got time for one more map before the stream ends. Oh my gosh. I wanted to do this so long ago and I never did it. I slept on it. I gotta look at this one first. Hold on. I don't know if y'all recognize this. See you, Shortle. Pack map. But you know one thing they missed though that would just really, really seal the deal? Orb man. It, this is actually uh, the name for uh, Pac-Man in Japan was Paku Paku. It was actually Pac-Man, but they were afraid it'd be defaced in the in in America, so they changed it to Pac-Man. <laughs> That's my <laughs> random Scott Pilgrim quote for the day. <laughs> Waga 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 waga. No 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 no. Back man. <laughs> I mean, when you're in first person, you don't know you're not cheese, so. Waga 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 waga. <laughs> it's too bad you can't walk through these. They're like a solid. This map is beautiful. Very well done. I had this idea like five, six months ago, and then I just never got around to do it because I always have other projects on my plate. And this was more like a vanity passion project. It's funny. I love it. I wonder what we could use for ghosts, though. We need Inky Blinky. What's the Inky Blinky Stinky? And what's the other one? <laughs> Clyde? You say so.
Make him a blue ghost. He could be eaten. This is beautiful, though. All I can say, though, opportunity missed by not putting the cheese wheel. That's that's my only only complaint about this map. It's perfect, other than that one thing. Okay, someone wanted a circle map. Was there a particular map you wanted me to open? Circle. I'm gonna type circle, see if we're lucky. I mean, we got lots of maps that are circular, both in like, you know, using the rounded walls or there's some towers. Circle Walled City? Hmm. Is that what it was called? Or was it just like under most recent? Okay, I'm going to scroll slow. If you see it, let me know, okay? Like this? Circle search, right side. It's one of these, you said? Like this one here? Sorry, can you tell me the name of it so I can make sure I, I open the correct one? On the first page. Oh, Mordharal? Okay. Yeah, that one was uh, the walled city of Maldharal. And it had the weird floating blue thing, right? Is that the one you're talking about? I swear I saw it here just recently. Pretty sure I have it saved on my desk. Okay, let me find it. I think I have it actually saved because it was the damn challenge winner last week. It should be on my desktop here. Here it is. Yeah, it won the uh, the damn challenge last week. It, we uh, did everything is lava to celebrate the launch of our new update. One moment. is like last time we were able to play this one without any problems so what they've done here these are actually squares that were carefully delicately placed by hand and because you know squares we learned this in geometry when you're making graphs if you have enough straight lines intersecting at each other they can make a curved surface so Essentially, this was built by hand with some aspects, I'm assuming, using AI to like generate these rooms or, you know, walled rooms. And you could see the walls under, or the floor under it. They kind of put a like just a rounded wall around it to give off that impression. So a lot of this was placed by hand for sure. It's a very beautiful, beautiful map, though. I love this map. Let's uh, drop a token in so you can see some of the shops here these little shops underneath the edges it looks really cool 
Exactly. Exactly. If enough straight lines intersect with each other, you get a round surface. Very nice design. Just a very comfy, neat, got a nice aesthetic. Yeah, it looks like a radio tower up there. Yeah, sorry. I, I mean, there's a lot of circle maps. And so unless I know the name, it can be kind of tricky sometimes. You know what I mean? So I apologize for any confusion leading up to the discovery of this map. Stargate? Where's the DHD? Any Stargate fans in here? <laughs> right? Me just whistling it for 10 seconds is enough. <laughs> I mean, I've only watched like SG-1 probably 50 times. I've watched the Stargate movie probably 100 times. Stargate Atlantis probably two dozen times. SG Universe about a half dozen times. I, I'm a big Stargate nerd. I love Stargate. Stargate is one of my favorite sci-fi, like, canons. It's interesting. I don't know. Stargate is it's fun and intriguing and it, it, it like a lot of probable deniability. It's like it could be happening. It could not be. It's just a fun concept. You know what I mean? Star Wars is just like, oh, that could never happen in our lifetime. Star Trek, maybe, maybe if we're lucky, we'll get to explore space to that degree. Stargate is like, oh, man, we stumbled on some alien technology and now we can traverse the galaxies. And now we're going to start reverse engineering everything we find and rapidly progress. Oh, puddle jumpers. So, Gore Vidal, funny story about that. There is a, an indie developer group um, that was making a fan-based game called the Stargate Network. Yours truly has a little bit of inf inside information about that because my first gig as a community manager was for as a volunteer at, at the Stargate network. I ran their Twitter and whatnot and streamed for them. And I, at the time I was a partner on Mixer and I would stream on Mixer and we would get hundreds of views, hundreds of thousands of views for this game. Um, and it was just a fun game made by fans in in uh, UE4, I believe, is what they were using at the time. And I was going to be going to E3 in 2019. And so I needed some time to prep for it. I was invited for free. And so I just needed to prep for it. And so I told them, I'm going to step down for, you know, three, four weeks to plan for this uh, trip. Go on this trip. I had to work a bunch leading up to it to make sure everything was good. Make sure everything was packed. Make sure all my ducks were in a row. Make sure I had lodging, everything. And I leave, and I leave the reins for them. And when I come back, they disconnected me from all of the tools. So I guess they just didn't want me on the team anymore at that point, or they decided they no longer needed me. Um, they didn't even talk to me about it. They just kind of removed me. It was really awkward. 
Um, anyway, so I, I still loved the game. It was an interesting game. They were kind of expanding it. They were adding Atlantis. They had a bunch of gate addresses you could go through and go to different planets. And it was more just like a fun exploration tool. Um, anyway, they got into litigation with MGM. MGM noticed it and told them to take it down. Uh, MGM took it down. And I had them take it down after they got a cease and desist. So they removed, the website went offline. The Discord is still active if you're a member, but you have to be there and be in it. And then the lead developer started in talks with MGM to make a game. They were working out details to finalize a contract when MGM and their entire library was purchased by Amazon, completely butchering the entire thing. So, I believe MGM was in the process of rebooting Stargate, both with a game and a show or a movie or all three, in hopes to, you know, kind of revitalize the franchise, come out swinging with a lot of different options. And then Amazon bought them and completely shifted gears. So... As a Stargate fan, this is evident from a bunch of different things, both what I learned in the Stargate Network Discord, um, as well as what some of the existing writers and creators and directors and showrunners of Stargate, because it looks like they were pitching the show to MGM and then had to repitch it to Amazon and Amazon turned it down. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I'm really hoping we get a new Stargate really, really badly. Big fan. Could talk about Stargate all day. Just call me Mac O'Neill with two L's. Anyway, lovely map to end the stream on. Thank you everyone for being here. I appreciate you all. We're going to wrap up. We're actually 10 minutes past the, the hour, so it's a little bit past our uh, run time, but that's okay. We had fun. We were hanging out. Thank you everyone for being here, for hanging out, being a part of this stream, supporting the community, being here in chat, answering questions, you know, when I miss them or just supporting as a viewer lurking. Um, I really appreciate each and every one of you to all our new followers. Welcome. Uh, we hope to see you back next week. Remember, we do have other places you can interact with, uh, you know, myself, our community members, our staff, our devs, etc. cetera. Um, I'm going to drop some links shamelessly for the next moment. And uh, if you, you know, are interested, feel free. We've got our Discord, which... Oh, Dercord. I am not doing good today. There, I fixed it. Twitter, Facebook, Insta... TikTok, talk reddit bunch of our socials if you are on those platforms you find one as your preferential platform do me a favor drop us a follow on there we're trying to grow on all those platforms get the word out about dungeon alchemist as we are an indie team a small little indie developer team with a miracle kickstarter you know we're still trying to grow and get the word out about our product so word of mouth is essentially our our biggest form of advertising um so when you guys you know retweet streams or talk to us on socials or um you know share our posts etc that helps us more than you know monday streams are going to be a thing going forward there's actually already an event in the discord for it make sure you rsvp every monday i'm still not settled on the name we're going to have what's called map maker monday for the interim that's the interim name where we will be, I will be making a map. Instead of focusing on community maps, we'll focus on building maps. And so I will be focusing on a build until it's complete. When it's done, I'll post it on the workshop for the community to download and use. Um, these maps, I picked the first map. I'm currently making uh, Marceline's Cave from Adventure Time. If you're a fan of Adventure Time, um, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. If you're not, tune in Monday, check it out. Um, the event in Discord actually has the time on it. Uh, we're starting earlier this week. I'm trying to get a time slot locked in that everyone will enjoy. It's Monday at 9 a.m. Pacific, but if you click on the event, it'll show your time in your region. 
so or your time zone so that'll be noon eastern i believe um let's see so it'd be five utc and six cet i believe sorry if i'm wrong on those i don't live over there i'm get, i'm kind of just doing the maths So every Monday, we're going to be doing Map Maker Monday. Every Saturday, we're going to be doing the damn streams. And that is likely to evolve a little bit even more with time. Um, so, and by that, I mean, uh, hopefully with time, I want to expand the stream to feature some one-shots, um, session planning, uh, as well as a long-term campaign. These are in the works. Um, and also, we will be converting the stream into a charity. And by that, I mean we're going to uh, finish applying for affiliate and push towards partner eventually. And any money raised on this channel will be all towards charity. So we'll pick a charity like each quarter, each half year, and all the funds we raise will be donated to them at the end of the quarter um so or year or half year whatever so it'll be a great way for our community to rally together and uh you know help good causes um and also it's just a good thing to do it's the right thing to do charity is awesome anyway thank you all for being here again my name is mac i am the community manager for dungeon alchemist we'll see you monday and next saturday um so same damn time, same damn cha same damn channel. Like I said, my name is Mac, the community manager for Dungeon Alchemist. This is the official Dungeon Alchemist channel. We'll see you next damn time. Mac out.